Hey guys, welcome to December and welcome to the holiday season. Now, look, if you guys remember, I've been hinting at this review for quite some time now. You see the shirt, you know exactly what is up. And of course, today I am going to be talking about, in commemoration of its 20th anniversary, Elf, directed by Jon Favreau, starring Will Ferrell, James Caan, Zoe Duchanel, Mary Steenburgen, Ed Asner, and Bob Newhart. Now look, I remember seeing this movie in theaters. Well, I must have been like four years old. <laughs> wow. I just feel so old saying that, that this movie is 20 years old. Obviously, a lot has already been said about Elf over all these years, but I would have to say this is one of the most watched films uh, that I've seen in my life. I mean, uh, I must have seen it like about 20 times or so now because I feel like every year since it uh, came out, I've been watching it uh, with my mom or, you know, whoever is around. And it's just an absolute blast. It's one of the most quotable movies of all time. It's one of the funniest movies ever made. And even 20 years later, regardless of how many times I've seen it, it still makes me laugh, you know? Maybe not quite as much as it would have a few years ago, but my goodness, this, this film is one that just has aged so well in general. And I have to give a lot of credit to David Berenbaum, the screenwriter on this, and the world that he creates, the contrast between the North Pole and the real world in New York City, it really is the best version of the fish out of water story. And I think a lot of that is also brought to life, not only by the incredible jokes and incredible humor in this film, but Will Ferrell at his absolute best. I don't think Will Ferrell has ever been better in any movie. I think he was Oscar worthy in this. Like really, this is one of the greatest comedic performances of all time. And the thing that's so amazing about how he portrays Buddy the Elf is the sincerity, the naivety, like it really feels so sincere uh, of a performance and it's really hard to pull off and in every single line he delivers is delivered with that sensitivity and you know just kind of trying to figure out what's going on but he, he's such a wholesome character and just absolutely <laughs> hysterical I mean I could go on and on about how great he is in this movie how many great lines are in this movie because uh, however you spin it I mean this really is like how how can anyone forget these jokes <laughs> you know what I mean they've kind of permeated themselves into the annals of pop culture and certainly during the Christmas season I mean so many people talk about Elf like all the time I always hear about it today if someone say Francisco Francisco <laughs> you know <laughs> so many great little moments in this film but some of my favorite moments I guess because there's really no point in me reviewing this movie beat for beat um but some of my favorite moments in the movie, and this one is the perfect example of um, the fish out of water uh, element of the story that works so well, is when Buddy first goes into uh, the store for the first time and he sees the bra that says, for someone special, <laughs> and then he buys it for his dad. <laughs> Like, that joke always gets me every time. Also, uh, another great joke is when he's in the, when he goes down to the mail room, and he's like, this reminds me a lot of the North Pole, except it smells like mushrooms and everyone looks like they want to hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And that whole sequence is amazing, but also another one of my favorite moments is like after, you know, uh, of course the iconic fight with the, the mall Santa at Gimbal's, <laughs> and afterwards he goes back, <laughs> and he's like talking to um, Jovi, and she says to him, it's like, wait, why, why are you still here? Like, didn't you get fired? He's like, oh yeah, no, but we figured it out. They gave me a restraining order. <laughs> Yet again, it, it, it's humor like that that really... Uh, puts us above, but more than anything, it's just a very, very uh, touching story, you know, a, a very touching Christmas movie that really captures the spirit in a way uh, that I don't think a lot of Christmas movies do in this vein. And it's such a celebration of so many things. 
uh, the soundtrack is absolutely killer. I mean, you have you have uh, Louis Prima to Ella Fitzgerald to Frank Sinatra, and it's just oh my goodness, one of the best soundtracks of all time. I would go as far to say. And of course, I mean the cast: James Caan as Walter Hobbs, uh, rest in peace. He was absolutely perfect uh, to play this curmudgeonly uh, older man who's kind of lost his way. Uh, and, and, you know, kind of the relationship he has with his family. And, of course, Ed Astor, another one, rest in peace, as Santa. He, he plays such a perfect uh, Santa Claus. He looks the role uh, to a T. You know, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Love Bob Newhart in this. Uh, who plays such a, you know, obviously the narrator of our story, but also plays a very, you know, nice uh, emotional role as his adopted father. Uh, and of course, I mean, Mary Steenburgen, uh, Daniel Tay is really great uh, as his younger brother, Michael. And, and just the dynamic they form is, is so great. Oh, yeah, Stevie Wonder. I forgot about that. You know, the scene where they're going through the mall and uh, they're playing What Christmas Means to Me. Just so iconic. Everything about this movie is absolutely uh, phenomenal. And then Zoe Duchanel, of course, who really hasn't aged in, in 20 years. I mean, it's it's kind of phenomenal, but uh, just the interplay between her and Will Ferrell. Now, I will say, in some movies, though, like this, where you have a character that, you know, uh, sweet and, and, and naive and, and kind of childlike, it seems a bit unbelievable that they would get together. Um, but at the same time, like, it, it is done very well, so it doesn't bother me too, too much. But, you know, if, if I had to reach for a negative, that'd be something. But I really do love the dynamic between those two, so it works well enough for me. And also, I mean, we got to talk about some of the other cast members that show up. Amy Sedaris, who's in, like, every John Favreau project. John Favreau himself in one scene is the doctor with the finger prick, it, <laughs> you know? Um, of course, you know, like, so many actors that just you know, blew up after this, but of course Andy Richter, uh, Kyle Gass, but really Peter Dinklage of all people, like, this is the first time I really saw Peter Dinklage in anything, and I mean, look at how far he's come uh, since this. I mean, really, this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal cast all across the board. Uh, the recently deceased Michael Lerner, uh, yet again another one, uh, rest in peace. Uh, who plays Mr. Greenway in this. He's only in a couple of scenes, but he's like the, you know, asshole figure uh, who's the superior above uh, Walter Hobbs. And is a good contrast to kind of, you know, bounce him off of uh, Walter's arc. And and that's another thing. that my, Probably my biggest criticism with this movie is how fast the third act goes. Like, Walter's arc seems very rushed. And... It's it's good enough, you, you you know what I mean? Like it's it's a nice story where they end it. A spoilers, of course, because you know I mean if you're clicking on this video, you've seen it, so uh, I'm pretty sure it goes without saying. But I think they just kind of rush through the third act, and then of course the whole thing with the the park ranger. It's like oh I I put them on the naughty list, and they never forgave me. I'm like come on, that's just really stupid. Um, so there's a couple moments like that. Uh, that really bring this down from being an absolute like masterpiece, uh, you could say. But yet again, John Favreau explains here, you know, just what he was capable of, and you see the range that he has. Like within a few years, he did Zathura, and then he did Iron Man, which I still think is his best film, and essentially kicked off a, a multi-billion uh, multimedia franchise, and. I think he just is, is such a phenomenal filmmaker. I mean, coming all the way from uh, writing Swingers to this, it really showed uh, that John Favreau was here to stay, and and so was everybody else uh, in this in this wonderful, wonderful uh, family holiday film. Uh, it, it, it's yet again, it is fun for the whole family, but it has a lot of raunchy jokes that adults will appreciate, and it's just such a well balanced story. Has great characters. Uh, I absolutely love this movie, and, and I think I can speak for most people in saying that they do as well. So I'm going to give Elf a 9 out of 10. Uh, it's an absolute Christmas classic. Probably would be my top 10 favorite Christmas movies of all time. But it's certainly the one that I've watched more than uh, most of the others, uh, besides maybe It's a Wonderful Life. But then again, I mean, I didn't watch It's a Wonderful Life uh, until like I was in my teens. So... 
I'm pretty sure that I've seen Elf more than any other Christmas movie in my lifetime. Uh, but I certainly think that is still one of the best to this day. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think about Elf down in the comments below. Uh, really glad I could come on here and talk about it. it. Yet again, it's crazy to think 20 years ago in the theater I was watching this, and now here I am talking about it today. Uh, but let me know, uh, of course, and smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you are new to this channel, would love the support going to be coming out with some really, really banging movie reviews. <laughs> I'm going to be honest because this weekend may have been the best weekend for movies like ever. Uh, so be sure to let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, so uh, until the next video, uh, got you guys enjoy your time here, uh, enjoy your lives, and have a very happy holiday season. I'll talk to you soon.